What is going on guys? Okay, it is Monday morning and I figured I explained, I should explain why we had to cancel this the live on Sunday night. I was set up over here by the pool area and basically I had table chairs over here and I was ready to have the live. Now the wind has caught up. I'm at Two Guns, Arizona, and uh, it is an interesting place. This is an old abandoned KOA campground, and I was I was set up to have the live over here, and just about half hour, 45 minutes before the live began some skaters showed up and uh so i kind of it was cold and i was trying to use this area to kind of block the wind and get me get me get me out of the out of the weather so to speak because it was too windy and too cold to be out and about that didn't stop the skater kids and at a certain point, I had to call it and say, can't do the live. It just, I'm not going to be able to switch things up and change it here. And, uh, and I apologize for that. The skaters were still here when a pickup truck showed up. And they brought a lot of wood. And if you remember the pool, the pool I, I filmed and I showed in my last video. That is what is left of a swimming pool of one of the RV parks. Quite some creative painting now. Not very big. And uh, yeah, the skaters came in and then and then the pickup showed up with the firewood and they lit a huge fire down in there and all total they were here a couple hours and you can see i really uh really probably wasn't the best situation it's too bad it's too bad so but I guess that is the ebb and flow of this area. Uh, something tells me the next time that I'm ever here, that will be repainted and redone. Um, it's funny because there have been homeless people showed up and they threw their trash on the ground. And then the night before last, somebody came out in the evening time and repainted the back wall and if you remember i filmed the back wall of this little uh pool pool house you might say we'll call it a pool house and he this has all been repainted he was here for a couple hours now here's the funny thing he was here a couple hours and he painted all of this he painted all of this and he left and did not leave one spray can spray paint can on the ground but yet i see the garbage from other people around here and uh i was quite impressed i'm sure it took a lot of cans of paint to paint this and he did he took all of his cans of paint with him. But I guess that shows you, you can't judge a book by its cover. The skaters, the skaters didn't leave anything that I know of. They probably weren't related to the pickup truck with the firewood. They, they left soon after the pickup truck showed up. And yeah, so you know what, again, what would you do in that situation? I mean, where we're located is in the middle of nowhere, somewhere about halfway in between Winslow, Arizona and Flagstaff. And a little off ramp and a sign 
showing this as two guns that there's a there's a old there's an old gas station over there there is a lot more to see here though let me jump in the truck let's do a little running around and i'll show you what is here and what is left of two guns hang on guys let's get over here this is the old camp building here and lots of pictures of that online just a lot of rubble left fire vandals have brought that part down a couple of water tanks there and there once they were painted a couple of pictures online of those but a lot of graffiti has kind of taken over on those too but let's uh let's get to the meat of two guns arizona As busy Highway 40 rushes past. About the only thing that you can see from Highway 40 as you drive by is this abandoned gas station. This was, near as I can tell, built in the 70s along with a KOA campground. And I'd say the gas station has seen better days. And the modern architecture, or more modern than just about anything else in this area, is actually holding up not too badly, except for the graffiti and paint that has kind of been splashed along the walls but you can almost picture the counters fairly cleaned out. First time that I've actually taken a walk through here. The service bays. Wow, that is a chunk of glass. I'd have to say that is about two inches thick. I don't know where that came from. That's interesting. A workbench along the back. I imagine this bench has seen a lot of car parts as people probably needed service or something repaired. Again, I haven't been in here. Heater ducts. Looks like the wiring has been stripped out of the panels. I would say it's more than a fixer-upper. I will say that this is, these are metal? Oh yeah. Probably why this place has survived against vandals and fires. Hard to say. But this is not the oldest or best part of what used to be Route 66. There is a little bit of Route 66 still left here. Most of it going over that direction to the east has been taken out. And just this small section, about a quarter of a mile long, still remains. So we'll jump on that next and drive in. Hang on guys, let me get back to the truck. We'll take a drive down to the oldest part 
of two guns and work our way work our way through the years you might say hang on this part or section of route 66 did parallel right alongside of highway 40 let's see if we can get on a little bit of the old blacktop kind of growing over with weeds this is about the longest section in this area most all of it has been torn up and left to basically dirt roads you can kind of see the ruins off in the distance over here of two guns or actually, as it started out, Canyon Lodge, which was a trading post. But we'll talk about that in a minute. It is kind of cool to be on Route 66. I know some places have survived better than others, and I'm sure at some point they will tear this blacktop up and it will be gone. Highway 40 crosses over. This is Canyon Diablo. And it was actually marked on maps from the Spaniards, who were the original inhabitants of the area. Canyon Diablo stretches for many miles in each direction, but this was the easiest place for wagons to get across the canyon and this little road that goes down right here and it makes it makes a turn down there at the bottom and goes right across on the canyon I should say along the bottom of the canyon over to the other side over there this was the old wagon road. And then when autos came along, it was considered the auto trail. And this road was actually part connected all the way from California to Maryland. Walking over here, something that I've noticed is not marked or mentioned on maps or any of the information that I can get. These were supports for a suspension bridge. You can see them right here. That spanned across the highway. Probably was not used for very long. And, uh, in fact, a lot of people probably decided it would be better to take that wagon road to get across. But you can see, if I walk down here, if I get down here quickly enough, you can see the support posts right here, still left in the ground, right there, right there. Just wide enough for one car and those support posts are also on the other side over here so even though it hasn't been mentioned that there was a suspension bridge across here there is evidence that it's that at least for some time it was here I don't know I'd probably take the wagon road it doesn't look that bad <laughs> Hold on guys, I'll see you, show you where this comes out and uh, we'll, we'll keep going here. We're at the other side of the canyon where that wagon road comes out and it's not hard to see the old wagon road. Goes up right there and goes up right there. 
and right on the other side are the oldest buildings that I can tell this one over here and there was another one that was over this way somewhere I can you can see you can see the shape of the building but in 1914 they decided they needed a new bridge over the canyon and that was about the time that Route 66 was born renaming it the auto trail I think it was called the coast to coast auto trail to Route 66 we're gonna drive across that yeah, we are, because we need to see what's on the other side. Hang on. We still have more to see. There are ruins over on this side, but we'll explain those in a little bit, too. All right, because we're not, we're, we're not to that point yet. I just know that this bridge is all concrete and I have seen people driving across it I'm still not going to spend any time driving on it that wagon road came right out of the canyon right here used to pass right right through there you can still see people walk it every now and then interesting thing about this canyon it was the nearest place to cross Diablo Canyon or Canyon Diablo whichever way you wish to call it and along the rocks along the side there I guess the people have inscribed names and dates and the earliest date that can be seen on Diablo Canyon I believe was listed as 1850 kind of graffiti even back then by people heading for California back in the late 1800s near as I can tell I can't get a first date on when the original buildings were built here and I don't know just how old this building is but I suspect either this one or there's another one with the foundation over there uh, that all is left is the foundation were the original buildings and what they called Canyon Lodge this was before it was called Two Guns and it was a trading post built by trappers and other other people that came into the area this is navajo territory and apache territory there's actually three indian tribes around here hopi Navi, uh, navajo and the apache and i i don't know how far over that foundation was that i saw but something tells me that was the oldest building because i could tell a lot of the rock walls and things were taken from that area to build some of the other buildings around here but near as i can tell that was the first trading post on the wagon road going east to west the coast to coast wagon road and up there is where two guns got its start so we're gonna head up there now the history of two guns and canyon lodge are a little little dicey because it wasn't well documented and as a lot of these small little trading posts weren't um, so how far back they go now these buildings that we're going to next it's a little easier to put the story together but 
And, and here, here is one of the old buildings as I'm driving over there. You can see the foundation walls, some of the rock walls still standing. Again, hard to place which one of these buildings came first. And I'll explain that in a second because they all look old. And, uh, well, they are, but some are older than others. We'll go with that. <laughs> In the early 1920s, this was purchased and bought by the Cundiffs. And they decided, and you can tell by the round turret style of the building, this became the, the next iteration, I guess you'd say, of Canyon Lodge. And I have some pictures that I can throw up of this. It was a Texaco station. And you can see... And you can see the bases for the gas pumps. One of the pictures was from this perspective see if I could throw that up there real quick you can see where the gas pumps were I just I love going through the ruins of these places and and seeing them and kind of imagining kind of imagining ooh there's a hidey hole well, I don't see anything in there. Stairs over on this side are pretty non-existent. I'm not sure if it's safe to walk up there anymore. Probably not. Now one of the buildings that I have not seen in the pictures is one over here. It too looks ancient and old and quite possibly could have been an original building here an original trading post I, it's hard to say one of the things I noticed on this one this building did not have cement in between the stones as I look through the rubble I really don't see concrete which is pretty common for all of these other buildings over here. So it is possible this could have been an original building. Everything seemed to be going pretty well with the gas station and in 1926 along came a character to the Cundiffs that owned this who proposed to lease about 10 acres of land from the Cundiffs for building a kind of a resort, a zoo, uh, several different ideas, several different things going on. And this guy's name was Harry Chief Crazy Thunder Miller. And I have some pictures of him right here. Chief Crazy Thunder was crazy okay he claimed that he was Apache he was not but he claimed that he was uh, that was that was disproven later on I guess in the stories that I have read but he did lease the land from the Cundiffs and he built a zoo basically and this is what he what the reason that it looks old is because he had Hopi Indian locals come in and build the buildings for him and recreating the old ruins on the edge of Diablo Canyon. I, I haven't taken a lot of walks through this one. If 
but quite a bit of construction and here's Diablo Canyon right here and indeed some of the uh, newspapers uh, around the country list ads from Harry Miller trying to get animals for his zoo looks like we have some steps that go down right here And the zoo was one of the places that people would stop on the now renamed Route 66. This was a walkway along here to view the animals. And Harry Miller put all manner of animals that he could get for his zoo. And supposedly, I guess you could walk along here and see the different habitats, zoo type habitats. Some of the screening is still here. Most of it held in with chicken wire. I don't know what kind of wild animals he had. Well, actually I do. And that would scare you. There's at least a picture of a lynx. As many as two mountain lions. And they even advertised Gila monsters. One with a picture of a Gila monster on Harry's leg. But there's a dark side of this area and this Route 66 stop. You can see this zoo went on for quite a ways. All right here on the edge of the canyon. I will say, it's pretty cool. Let's see if we can make our way back through the rubble here. Oh, I have to show you this building over here. This was the outhouse. And obviously it had a men's and women's side. Not much of the boards are left, but there were two seats over on this side. There was a wall in between and then two seats over on this side. I can't imagine sitting next to somebody doing your business. It was a different time. It was a different time. <laughs> Building over here, not much talked about. It does appear to be pretty old. And again, I'm not seeing the concrete in the walls. No. No concrete. Well, I, you know, I could be wrong. I see a little bit of concrete. Not a lot though. Yeah, this does, no, this is mud pack. This is mud pack right here. I mean, that's not concrete. That, this, is, this is mud pack. So I don't know if this might not be an original building as well. What I was thinking was concrete. As I look up here, now I, you can pinch it and it just disintegrates. So, again, I'm discovering this with you 
and uh, I've looked at that building before but I haven't been up close to it I thought that was concrete in between and a, a concrete mortar holding that together it's not all right I told you earlier there was a dark side of two guns Canyon Lodge I should say we haven't gotten to that point yet with the success of the zoo Harry Chief Crazy Thunder renamed Canyon Lodge to two guns and that name has stuck all the way up till today again moving into around 1930 or so so around that time 1930-ish I think it was Cundiffs and Chief Crazy Thunder Miller had an argument and it's a little disputed on what exactly happened but a gun came out and Harry Miller shot Mr. Cundiff to death he did face court and they found him not guilty citing I guess self-defense I'm not sure the stories are a little blurred there but after killing Mr. Cundiff Harry Miller had a hard time dealing with the widow Cundiff here and left not too long after that point so we have one side trip that we're going to do real quick and that is this is the old route 66 and I told you it's all dirt road now but we're gonna follow this out because I saw another building here and there may be a story about that as well so hold on, let me drive out here and see if we can see this building out here. Gated and fenced off now. There is a bridge, that is the old high, Route 66, a smaller bridge going across the ravine. And it heads over and there is the rubble of a house right over there. Why is that important? Well, it may have some interesting history to it. It's reported that Billy the Kid and his gang hid out at a ranch house just real close to, just west of Two Guns. There's one there, and then there's another one that's way over there. Let's see if I can point it out. It's hard to see on the screen here. Well, that's neither been confirmed or denied. It's hard to confirm when somebody hides out, but it was reported Billy the Kid and his gang hung out there for one winter. I'd say it wasn't a bad place to hang for the winter. Okay, as we drive back to Two Guns, which isn't very far, it's only about a quarter of a mile. Um, I'll pick up where the story left off. So, the chief shot Mr. Cundiff and killed him, and the widow Cundiff maintained the property after the chief or Harry Miller left. But we're headed over to a place where I said there was a dark side of this place and I will show you all. It wasn't the only thing, the only, not the only thing that Harry Miller created while he was here. And we're gonna
going to drive right over there now. We are across the canyon again, back over on the other side. I see this building does have concrete. A number of buildings Harry had built over in this area. One he actually lived in, from what I understand. But let's see if we can get up there by there and I can give you a view. There's still walkways. A lot of this has eroded and collapsed over time. This building looks old, but it actually was built for Harry, possibly as a house where he was living, and he used this as a ticket booth. People could come here, buy tickets, There is an upstairs. I don't think it would be wise to try to go upstairs. You see that? If we follow it around another building down there. Again, he had the Hopi natives help build a lot of these little buildings. But they are connected to something very dark. This has collapsed, caved in over time. And there is a cave here. That is looking down into the cave. Originally, they were listed as the Apache Caves or the Mystery Caves. They were, they were actually advertised both ways on signs. And I probably could get a better view of this one if I step very carefully. A walkway leading down to this one now. I can tell you a lot of this has collapsed, caved in. A lot of that rubble that you see down in the bottom uh, was probably has probably fallen down in there over time, leading right on out to Diablo Cave or uh, Diablo Canyon, Canyon Diablo. We're going to go in that cave and that will be tomorrow's video. I'll explain why this cave was renamed Apache Death Caves. And why the bad luck and the bad, they're just a, a haunting presence over two guns and that's going to be our Halloween special tomorrow I'm going to give you the explanation we're going to go into that cave and uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to explore that cave I have not been down in there but I'm going to find a way to get down there it looks like it's a heck of a heck of a bad climb to get in there right now but I look forward to getting down in there It gives some explanation of two guns. So join us tomorrow night. We'll see you guys. And we'll talk about Apache Death Cave. It'd be a good topic for Halloween. I, I like it. I have had an absolute blast hanging out here and exploring all around here, around Diablo Canyon and two guns. Spooky. There is there is kind of a presence here. Wow. Well.
creepy history. Got a creepy vibe. Perfect for Halloween. All right, guys. I'm going to go down into the Apache Death Caves tomorrow, Halloween day. And I'll be airing that on my live Sunday night. It's gonna be 5.30, 6 o'clock Pacific. Also, if you're a geocacher, I've had a lot of fun looking around, including right here by the Death Caves is a geocache. There are several in the area and uh, having fun finding those while I've been here. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm a little nervous about going to that death cave. I'm not gonna lie. Let's see if we can get out of here.